Growing an agency plus $20,000 a month mark is something that not many people talk about, but I see a lot of agency owners getting stagnant at that level, you know, anywhere from like 10 to $20,000 a month. And sometimes they even have $20,000 a month, but they are not able to sustain that. So in this video, what I wanted to do is show you exactly how you can scale your ADC past that and what's more important, how to actually sustain that. Let's get right into it. So why you can't scale your agency plus $20,000 a month? I see agency owners every single day plateauing at around $20,000 a month and can't really scale past that. What is funny is that they book sales calls pretty consistently and even close at the decent rate, but for some reason at the end of each month, their Stripe screenshot is always looking like this. So why am I talking about that in the first place is because I was at that level for way too long and too long that I should be. And uh, so that's why I wanted to record this video because I think that level of like 20K per month is something that not many people talk about, but a lot of people are stagnant at. So, if you're experiencing this, and I know how frustrating that is, because as I said, it lasted literally months within my agency, and you might blame everything around you, but like 90% of the time, it's just because one of these few things. So in this video, like I said, I want to show you how you can scale past that and even start hitting those like $20,000 weeks, not months. So first thing, which is the most important and probably the most common reason is sales. Because if you're a normal agency that doesn't have like 20% charge, the, the main reason, as I said, why you're not hitting those numbers is because you're not selling enough. So you might be booking a lot of calls using cold emails or like outbound prospecting, but the lead quality might be low. You know, people don't know when you're causing you to like charge lower prices and not being able to close more than like 20% of your deals. Cause simply there's no trust authority between you and the prospect. So let's do some calculations, you know, let's say your offer is priced at $2,000 a month and you're booking 15 calls a month and the show up rate is 80%, meaning only 12 of these 15 calls are actually taken. And that's kind of like an average show up rate in the niche. Of course, there are people out there with like 90 plus percent, but I also show, saw some offers with like 50% show up rate. So that's why I took like 80% here. Now, 25% are not the best fits or can afford your service. I'm sure everyone experienced that. So you're really left with just like nine calls from which if you close 20% and also I saw people that are even struggling to close at the 20%. You bring in around like two new clients at $2,000 a month and technically you just added $4,000 to your MRR. So if you just continue to do that, like even if you're starting from complete zero in five months, you should have $20,000 a month agency. But for some reason, it doesn't work that way. So you might be experiencing this, that you're consistently signing new clients every single month, but yet you're not able to really scale past that. So let's say your churn is probably like 10%, meaning you lose one client this month, you know, 10%. For some people, it's really high. For some people, it might be low. But let's just take, say it's 10%. So in reality, if you lose one client a month, because let's say you have like 10 clients, you're making 20K, but then you're only really adding $2,000, you know, because you're close to clients, but you also lose one. But the problem is that if one week, one month, you lose two or even three clients, you know, or you just book less calls, or you're not able to close at the 20% closing rate, or you know, just you're, uh, you're, you can close 20%, but you drop your prices to get those deals and you're not really actually adding $2,000 a month with your, every new client. In all those cases, you will be either stagnant or even at loss. So technically, if you're just closing two clients and you have a 10% churn, like you should be able to scale, you should be able to add $2,000 to your MRR every single week. But it doesn't work that way because one bad month, and as, as you can see, there's a lot of different very like the variations here that will cause you to actually not be able to hit those numbers because you might just book less calls the lead quality might be worse you might be not be able to close at 20 percent you know rate you might lose more clients one month and one month can literally set you back a lot so that's why even if you have let's say three months where you are actually able to just like add two thousand dollars to your revenue to sign with this one client you will have one bad month and you will pretty much get back to the point where you started so that's why the first thing that you want to do is just like be able to get more clients predictably and not just book more calls because that's also a funny thing that I see is that I see a lot of agency owners booking like, yeah, we book 10 to 20 sales calls a month, 20 sales calls a week, but then, you know, they're still stagnant or not even adding that many clients. So you know, booking more calls is never the goal. Like you actually want to close more clients unless the call quality is good. You know, of course, then it kind of just is a numbers game. So once you book more calls, you will get more clients but focus on getting more clients, not booking more calls. And in order to do that, you need to forget the old concept of just, you know, doing the outreach, getting people to the sales calls and then having them become your clients. 
Because at that point, like it's something that worked for you and it got you to that point of like 20K per month. But right now, when you see you're at this level, you need to understand how your sales process works and how to optimize it. So increase your show up rate, build more trust and authority before the call. So basically everything that you want to do before the call should be you know, making the sales calls as easy as taking orders. Ultimately close more deals over the phone. So just get better at selling and then close more deals from follow up. So knowing how to use CRM, like I see agencies that are 20K per month, not even having a CRM. So closing more deals from follow ups is also important because not every deal, like you, you can't close everyone on the call. There will be people that want to do it later, that something is like holding them back. Of course, a lot of those times there also are just objections that you can overcome, but still you want to be able to close those people even later down this line. So I actually, in my agency, like, I close many people after some time. So it's not like, you know, once you don't close someone on the call, it's a lost deal. Like you can always close them later, basically. So a few things that you can do here, uh, when it comes to increasing your show up rate, just using a pre-call flows in Calendly, it plus reminders, you know, even calling the leads before meeting, those are some things that can help. When it comes to building more trust and authority before the call, so it's, as I said, easy as taking orders. You also want to use pre-call flows with like case studies, testimonials, content, and your personal brand is a key here as well. Because if you have a personal brand and people can just look you up on the internet, watch some of your content, like that's gonna help tremendously ultimately close more deals over the phone. So basically, you know, just get better at sales. Now, why sales is so important? You know, why I'm talking about sales like here all the time? Because, you know, with churn, like there are really two things, you know, when it comes to like scanning your agency, you have your churn and you have your sales. So if the churn is higher than the sales, like the amount of clients that you're bringing in, like you won't be able to scale. So a few things we need to focus on is actually making sure that the churn is as low as possible so that clients stay with you for as long as possible. And then that we're actually closing more deals. And First thing, you know, when we look at churn, it is really important to keep it low, but at the same time, churn is something that you cannot get to zero. So even the best agencies in the world experience some churn. But again, why is it important? Because as you can see, the compounding if impact of churn is massive. And as you can see, this is a difference of just like 5% churn rate. And while at the beginning, it doesn't really matter, like you can just keep signing clients and you know, you don't have to worry about that. Over the long run, it's a massive difference, you know, really a massive difference. So. That's why even though you can't get that number to zero, you need to make sure that you're actually retaining your clients once you get them. Now, we're gonna talk about some things you can do here as well, but then we have the sales and sales is even more important in a way because sales, like you can scale that almost infinitely. So while you cannot bring your return to zero, it's literally impossible. With sales, you can literally sign 100 clients. You know, of course it will be hard and probably not possible in many, of you, but uh, you know, you technically could do that. Like there's no ceiling here. You can sign 10 clients every single month, for example. So let's say again, like you have a $2,000 a month service. Now, of course, like you might have a profit share, you might have, um, you know, one of deals, build and release offers. It doesn't have to be a flat $2,000 a month retainer, but it's just for the calculations here. So if you're doing $20,000 a month and you have like 10% churn, uh, you got to sign at least 2k in new deals so like one client every month just to be stagnant because like you're going to lose one client every month because at this level you need 10 clients 10% churn you lose client every single month so you need to be able to add a new client every single month to just be stagnant but if let's say you're doing $100,000 a month and you also have a 10% churn you, every single month you got to add at least $20,000 in new deals so you literally need to you would add this like 2k per month level you would need to sign 10 clients every month just to be stagnant. So not even to grow, just to be stagnant. So if let's say you, you get that number to like 5%, now you, you know, you're in a way better position because you not, not, it's no longer 10 clients. It's just, you know, five clients, for example. So as I said, it's important to keep the churn as low as possible, but you can get that number to zero at the end of the day. So that's why you can't just play the defense by trying to reduce the churn to like 1% to scale agency. You need to play the offense as well by just focusing on sales. So. At twenty thousand dollars a month, you should already have multiple case studies and testimonials. That's why you should stop relying only on cold outbound and start building your personal brand on YouTube or on other platforms. But what I want to say is that you shouldn't stop doing cold outbound, but you should stop relying solely on that because it got you to that level, of course. But getting to the next level will require different actions from you. So having your personal brand will actually can actually help not only by just helping you get more clients but also with all those things, you know, just building more trust and authority before the call, helping you, uh, you know, just making the sales easier overall. So 
as I said, not only will it bring you to your more clients, it will help you close more deals from outbound, build trust and authority, support your whole sales machine so you can ultimately close more deals. Now, the more your offer niche is saturated, the more important it is to actually build your brand. So if you have a really unique offer, well, maybe you don't need the personal brand that much, but if you're selling Facebook ads, if you're selling lead gen, if you're selling email marketing, if you're in any of those like more saturated niches, you gotta have a personal brand so you can stand out from all of those people. Because there's only gonna be more and more competition and the ones that are gonna win are those that are not afraid of putting themselves out there. So that's simple as that because trust is more and more important. Uh, it's more important than ever pretty much. So the way you can build this trust is by having a personal brand in a way. So here's an example like one of our clients, Nick. Well, everyone in that space, like Facebook ads for e-commerce, he's, he's trying to just like, do like cold outbound, spend a lot of money on ads. Nick is just creating YouTube videos. And this is got, getting him clients, you know, every, like he got around like 50 clients, made like well over seven figures from his YouTube channel. He gets e com brand applying to work with him every single week. So he doesn't have to chase people. He just creates the content that your ideal, his ideal clients are looking for. Uh, he's getting in front of them and basically clients are coming to him every single month like imagine how different it is when you're closing a client that came to you for your content than it is to close a client that you just reach out to with a cold email or you know here's another one of our clients who basically uh, we did some research and you know it turns out that youtube is the highest converting fastest sales cycle for for him and he's actually an expert when it comes to you know lead gen so it's not like he just cannot do anything else and then YouTube is, is this you know amazing thing that brings him clients. It's actually someone that you know understands how it works and understands the value of the content and how it can help speed up the sales cycle and close more deals, you know, basically because it's a highest converting source of clients for him. So the problem with AOGC sales also is that most people don't know how to sell. So they have like no sales processes in place, no CRM, no follow-up systems, and just running around trying to close new deals. And to get to $50,000 a month, you need scalable systems and not random actions. So a lot of people, they just learned from Iman Ghazi or like whoever on the internet that the sales are simple. Like you just book someone on a sales call and then you close them with like a script from like five years ago. And they don't understand how to conduct the sales call. How does the sales process works? How to follow up with those people after the call? And that's why they are not able to sign those clients consistently because they just think, oh, let me just book more calls, jump on more calls, close more deals. And it doesn't work that well, simply. So then the second aspect is is hiring. And a lot of people also are struggling to scale past $20,000 a month because they go to that level either by themselves or with like one, two or three team members, like really a lean team. It of course depends on like what is the service that you offer and what's the pricing, what's the offer, all of that stuff. But what got you to that point won't be the thing that will get you to $50,000 a month. So at that level, really, like $20,000 a month, even like ten to $20,000 a month, you should really start focusing on the most important tasks and automate or delegate the rest. So you should really see focus all your attention on buying back your time so you can focus on the most important tasks that will drive the business forward, like sales, creating content, hiring, systems building, and just like making sure that your clients are getting results. Now, that doesn't mean working in your business and actually doing the work for clients, it actually means, you know, training your team. Uh, it actually means building the right systems, communicating with those clients just to make sure that they are happy and they are getting the results. And you got to really look at like, you know, most of the film, make a list of all the things you're doing and just like look at your to do list from the previous week and then make an audit of your actions and don't be afraid of spending money on hiring people. So once you like right now, I'm at a stage where I'm trying to literally delegate everything and not just delegate, just like gifts to someone, but actually make them good, help them, you know, tra train them, all of that stuff. I just hired also like a personal assistant, personal executive assistant. So it's uh, kind of helping me with these two things just because I don't want to be the one doing the admin tasks. I, even if I need someone for like personal life, like I don't need want to be the one that is going to like, you know, call the repair shop because I need a repair and I need to like set a meeting with them or whatever. I just want someone that can help me with all those stuff, not even because of the time aspect, which is of course huge, but also to just like free my mind so I can focus on the most important stuff and growing my business forward. So I see a lot of people being afraid of spending money on hiring people, which I will never understand because if I can spend $2,000, you know, on someone to buy back my time so I can scale to, so I can add like $10,000 to the, to the monthly revenue while working less, like, there's no point in not hiring here. 
So would you rather make $20,000 a month with like 75% profit margin or hire people and scale to $100,000 a month with like 50% profit margin? Because here you're just making $15,000 and you're probably working way more than you will at $100,000 a month with 50% profit margin. So here you will make 50K and probably work way less, could go on like vacations and stuff. So hiring is almost the same as selling because it's a numbers game. And now when it comes to the hiring, if you want to find good candidates, as I said, first thing, just make sure that you're delegating the right things. So do an audit of your time, start with the lowest ganging fruit. But once you are ready to hire someone, just first thing you gotta do is just find a way to get a lot of good applicants, then sort them through the application and make them complete a task test task. So we don't want to, you know, if we get 50 applicants, we don't want to just get on 50 interviews because that's like stupid. It's a waste of time. So you get that, we'll find a way to sort through the applications. Now, especially if you're hiring, you know, people in the creative industry, it's easy just because let's say video editors, designers, you can always just give them a test task. Like let's edit one minute of the video. Let's create a thumbnail. Let's create a design, whatever. It will uh, show you exactly like who is actually, you know, uh, good when it comes to taking them on an interview. And then just pick the best ones to have the interviews with. And once you're board your team, also set standards and goals, manage and train them properly. So whenever we are hiring, we don't want to just get someone and like, yeah, let's do the work and then like remove yourself from the process because you got to spend some time with them actually to make sure that they work, uh, you know, that the standards are there and that they can do their work properly. And also one thing is that personal brand is a game changer when it comes to the hiring. So my partner has his own YouTube channel uh, here in Poland in like the finance niche. So all of his audience is like young people trying to get better with their finances, self-improvement, all of that stuff. And whenever we need someone for the agency, we just like, he just creates a post, like mentions someone where in the video that we're looking for this, this and that. We have a full inbox of applicants, you know, for pretty much every position with our agency of A players. So like really amazing people that are amazing culture fits just because we have this personal brand. So third thing that when it comes to the, the scaling the agency, first thing that might be holding you back is the LTV. So we gotta maximize the lifetime value because agency is really the game of lifetime value. And to increase the lifetime value of a client, you can either make them spend more money with you or stay longer with you. So two ways you can do it. You can either move into more of a growth partner model where you just work with less clients, but take a percent of the revenue generated and make more money this way. Or you can productize your service and just like get more clients and then keep them for longer. So a few things you can do to make more per client is of course, just charge higher prices, app sales, you know, introduce app sales or cross sales. So if let's say your service as a complimentary service that you could offer to these clients because that's the, like, the next step for them to, to do something, then you can always offer that. You can introduce ref shares as well. So just take a percentage of the profit that you generate. And then there's a referral program. I don't know if it exactly ties into making more per client, but if you don't have a referral program, a proper referral program for your agency, you might be losing on a ton of money. So a few things you can do to make clients stay longer with you now. First thing is just like get them better results because at the end of the day, like results are everything. But at the same time, people will be happy sometimes to stay with you, even if the results are not that great. If you have an amazing communication, so like, you know, you reply quickly, you send them updates, you're proactive, you have relationships with them, you have like amazing onboarding. So that's why also don't neglect those things. Because sometimes if you get in someone a good result and maybe, you, you know, you're the first agency that they work with, they will just assume that getting results is the easy part and that like everyone will get them the same results. So now they, that they look at the, that they, when they, someone comes to them and says, I'm going to get you better results, then they will just like sign up with them basically, because there's no relationship. There's no, you know, maybe the communication is lacking. They don't really enjoy working with you that much. So once someone comes around and says, yeah, I can do it better. Even if it's just like a false promise, they will believe that because based on the work that they do it with you, they think that getting results is the easy part. So now basically they will just like look for the, but someone that can promise them the big, the most, the most basically. Uh, improving the onboarding is a really important aspect that not many people look at, but the client will kind of judge the whole relationship and the whole, you know, like process of working together by the onboarding process. So a lot of people, a lot of business owners talk about the importance of a proper onboarding. And I truly believe it's the case because if you don't onboard your clients properly, if you don't set the expectations properly, then you will be struggling. The whole relationship with the client will be struggling here basically. Now I'm going to get into the fourth point in a second, but one thing that you might be thinking of about, cause this is the last point is like, 
why there's nothing about the offer here. And first thing, I think the offer is kind of like overrated a bit. So of course, offer is important. You know, Alex Ramosi talks about it all the time. But at the same time, kind of everyone right now is just trying to do make their offer as best as possible. It's even getting to the point where big offers, big claims doesn't even matter that much just because everyone has crazy offer with crazy guarantees. So that's one thing. And if you are doing like $20,000 a month or something you know, similar to that, you probably have a decent offer because you wouldn't be even making this amount of money with a really bad offer. So that's why I didn't mention it here. Of course, it's an important part of the business. It might, it could be one of the points, but I just decided to not include it here. Now, the fourth point is having a personal brand. It's once you're at the 20K per month level and you're not building your personal brand yet, this is the last sign for you to, to start, finally start. Now, where you can do it? You can do it on YouTube, amazing way to get clients, you know, use it to nurture people. Uh, so it attracts people, it nurtures people, it works as a salesperson for you. As I said, helps with hiring, builds a trust, authority, just a lot of stuff. You can use Instagram as well, uh, or you can use Twitter. I'm actually on all of those free platforms. I don't use Twitter that much. I don't really post that much there. Uh, we get some clients from that, even though, though we don't do that much. My favorite one, of course, is YouTube, since that's also something that we do for our clients. It brings me around the client a week. So that's really amazing, even though the channel is not that big. So I assume it's only going to get better because... I've seen it working with our clients and um, now focus on two free platforms max at a time because like find out where your ideal clients are and focus on building there because there's no point on being like omnipresent across all of the possible social media because it's just like a, a lot of the times just a waste of time. So there are people out there that just like want to be omnipresent all platforms, but because of it, they don't really put enough effort to make even one platform work and they just end up with they post a lot of content that is, isn't getting them the results that they want. So that's simply why I would recommend to focus on like two, three platforms max at a time. Uh, I like YouTube because it's kind of like a hub of everything. I can just like create YouTube content and then use it on my email list, redistribute it to Twitter, you know, take uh, from long form content. I can take short form videos as well, post them to Instagram. So it's just really easy for me to use the one content that I create and, you know, post it across all of those platforms. But yeah, same thing with like LinkedIn, Facebook, if you have those platforms, you can also repurpose the log from YouTube content there. So that's why I'm a big fan of that. But big question, why do you even need a personal brand? You, can, you might be thinking, well, I can just get to $50,000 without it. And sure you can, but it will take you way longer probably. As you can see, everyone out there at some point right now, like pretty much all of the big entrepreneurs, at some point they are becoming YouTubers. They are becoming, you know, they are working on their personal brand and it's not, accidental thing you know it's not happen it's happening for a reason because they see the value like even if you look at Alex Ramosi the guy made like shit ton of money and then decided that he's just gonna like, build his personal brand and he spends time and money on that a lot of money and a lot of time because he understands that it's the biggest leverage that he can have in his business so what it does it helps you attract more ideal clients that's the first thing like it literally brings you clients that are easy like ready to work with you that have the money that understand the value of your service so it's easy to sell to them it builds trust and authority and literally makes selling 10 times easier makes an authority and a go-to person in your market so kind of like everyone knows you which also gives you a lot of opportunities helps you charge higher prices because now when people come to you instead of you coming to them you can raise your prices easily and they people will still buy because the level of trust and the level of you know value that they see with, with your service is way higher if you're doing any kind of like ads or outbound campaigns it will perform better because even if i'm getting a cold email from someone i'm just gonna google their name and i'm gonna see like what comes up and if you have a solid youtube brand it, it will help tremendously uh, it builds a brand and brings in thousands of views so what i like about it is that once you get those, uh, once you build a brand, once you get thousands of views, subscribers, you can then easily introduce new offers, like even start new businesses and scale them quickly. So for example, one of our clients launched like a mentorship offer and literally added like, I don't know what it was, that, like 20, 30, $40,000 a month to his revenue, to profit actually, because this is like a mastermind, just because he had a personal brand and he does, oh, like, let me just sell the, that to these people because they don't qualify to work with my agency and a lot of people signed up and he's making a lot of money from it. It also helps you attract A players. As I mentioned, it helps tremendously with hiring because once you attract the right people, a lot of those, your, a lot of your viewers could be also amazing employees. So you will attract new clients, but you will also attract people that are kind of like like-minded that could be interested in working for you. And last but not least, it gives you speaking, sponsorships, affiliate opportunities. So 
a lot of the clients that we work with, they really spend zero on working with us, for example, just because they are, you know, they either have an affiliate program, in, they are like affiliates for some for some applications, software, stuff like that, or they have like sponsorships, and because of it, they just make enough money to cover pretty much the whole cost of our team, and then they just make um, from the back on the back end from signing new clients from YouTube. So having your own personal brand is literally one of the biggest leverage in the online business space. And if you want to help scale to fifty hundred thousand dollars a month, having a niche personal brand will massively help you. But you can't just start posting random videos and expect clients come in and like results to flow because that's really not how it works, even though some people think that way. So if you try to do it yourself, you might be just waste a lot of time and money trying to figure out how that's going to work, how to what type of videos to post, how to structure it. So that's why you need to have a proven process for that or you will waste time and money, as I said. So if you want my help in building your personal brand that will help you get more clients, become an authority and ultimately scale, you can go ahead and watch my free training or just book a one-on-one -on -one call with me down below and I'll walk you through our system. Uh, the system that allowed me to sign multiple clients in the last two months and add thousands to revenue to my agency on autopilot and this is the same system that we used for our clients as well uh, like nick who signed 15 new clients justin who is booking calls consistently jacob who literally closed like 30 case in new deals from just one video alex and brian whom we helped generate like hundred thousand dollars in sales in three months so it's not something that just worked one time it's something that continuously works for all of our clients pretty much. So if you want my help with scaling your YouTube channel so we can actually get clients and scale to that $50,000 a month in like fast track your way to that to that level, just go ahead and book a one call with me. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and leave a comment if you have any questions. And after this one, make sure to watch this video next.